Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Brandon, and today I want to talk about writing the OSCP report. Now, this is something that can be very daunting for a lot of people, and for good reason, because writing a good report can be the matter of passing or failing the exam. So before we start, I want to preface this by saying this video is going to be a direct continuation of the last video I made, which was how to write effective notes for the OSCP. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check that out before watching this. We're going to be writing a small example report based on the notes that we took in the last video. So on my screen here, you're going to see the notes that we took in the last video for the machine Vuln Zero. And I just noticed that we spelled Vuln Zero wrong, so I'll go ahead and correct that. Uh, let's see. Sorry, that's going to bother me until we fix it. There we go. So we have a good outline of notes of all the things from the initial Nmap scan all the way down to our proof. Now, for copyright reasons, I'm not going to be using the actual OSCP exam report template for this video, but you can find that freely available online. You don't have to be enrolled in the course to go and view that. And when you do the exam, I cannot stress this enough. I would highly recommend using their example template. You're not required to, but if generally if you're given a template, I would go ahead and use it because that's a template that whoever's grading it is used to seeing. They're going to be the most familiar with it. And to be honest, it's a very straightforward template and very easy to follow. Now, there are a lot of sections in the report, but the main section is going to be the penetration section. So you'll see all of the sections in there, like the high level summary, all the way down to the house cleaning section. Now, th all those other sections, you really just have to kind of change some of the wording for it, make it your own, maybe add a little detail here and there. But the big section is going to be the penetration section. That is where you're going to show step by step how you rooted each machine. So that's going to be what we're going to be focusing on today. So if we open up this Word document, you can see I've started doing this a little bit for our Vuln Zero machine. And now we're going to go through and kind of write the rest of it so you can see how this would be done and the level of detail that is needed. I can't stress this enough. There is no way you can be too verbose in writing this report. You should be including as much detail as possible. Don't leave anything out. Show how you transferred every file onto the machine and how you found every single file because that's going to be the matter of passing or failing on this report. You need to be as detailed as possible. Now to save us a little bit of time, I've already written part of the report and then we can go through and finish the rest in detail. So to get started, we have the Vuln Zero machine, which was the system that was vulnerable. And here is the IP. The vulnerability that we exploited for the initial foothold, if you remember, was the Moin Moin wiki service. There was an arbitrary command execution vulnerability in here. And here is the CVE for that. Now for the vulnerability explanation, I wrote CVE 2012-6081 shows that Moin Moin versions prior to 1.9.6 are affected by an unrestricted file upload vulnerability. An unauthenticated attacker could leverage this to upload a file with an executable extension and remotely execute arbitrary code on the effective system. Now, if you're wondering where I got that from, well, what we can do is we can just take this CVE right here and go ahead and Google it. Now, if you're wondering where I got the CVE from, if you remember for our notes, let's take a look back for Moin Moin Wiki. Somewhere in here, we saved the exploit DB link. I believe, I don't know, somewhere in here we saved it. I don't recall off the top of my head. Ah, right here where we did searchploit. So here's the exploit DB link. And if we go take a look, we can find the CVE number right here. There's two listed here, but we ended up using this one on the right. Now, if we look up this CVE and uh, Security Focus is an awesome site. So we'll do Security Focus. This will list out a lot of the information that we need. So Security Focus and MITRE, those are the two main ones that I'll be using. Uh, we can see like what class of CVE it is, uh, a little bit about the exploits, where those are available, a solution of how to mitigate it. And I believe the discussion should talk a little bit about why it's vulnerable. And then uh, on MITRE, it actually gives us some more detail here about where these vulnerabilities exist. So a lot of the description that I just pulled was from these two sources. So whenever you find the vulnerability on whatever machine you're exploiting, go ahead and look it up on MITRE or Security Focus and read some of these descriptions and try to write this vulnerability exp explanation here once you understand how the vulnerability actually worked. And then, of course, our privilege escalation vulnerability was the path hijacking of a cron job run as root. We can see that back in our notes here for the Privesk. The next thing that we have here is the vulnerability fix. So I said it's recommended to update Moin Moin to the latest version in order to apply the vendor supplied patches. And that's the remediation that was listed in the sources that we just talked about. The severity for pretty much all the vulnerabilities you're going to find is going to be critical because if you're using them in the OSCP, then you had to have some way to actually gain access to the machine with like an initial foothold or a shell. 
and then privilege escalation and all those kind of vulnerabilities are going to be classified as critical. So now what we're going to do is basically step through all of the things that we did to gain access to the machine. And this is where a lot of people tend to lose points because you need to be very thorough. So I want to go through and we'll start from the very beginning with the initial nmap scan all the way down to the proof. So the first thing it will say is an initial nmap scan revealed Moin Moin uh, version 195 running on port 8080. So we're going to be starting uh, with our notes from the very beginning. And remember how we just kind of pasted all this terminal output in here? Well, what we can do is we'll copy this. And if you're wondering what this little bar here is, it's like a little table. They have it in the example template. I just kind of copied it and pasted it into here. And I keep a blank one down to the bottom so we can copy and paste it as needed. So I'm going to paste this um, text into here. And I'm going to change the font to Courier New. That's an awesome font to use whenever you are uh, trying to type out some code. And then let's decrease the, oh, let's see. There we go. And now we can decrease the font size. Uh, I think eight looks about good. Now I would recommend highlighting whatever commands you run in a certain color. It doesn't necessarily matter. I would stick with like a blue or a green. I think they use green in their example. I prefer blue. Uh, so we'll go ahead and highlight that in blue. And at least that way, when someone's going through and grading, they know exactly the command that we ran. And then I would highlight whatever service we exploited in red. So here is the uh, actual thing that we exploited. Let's highlight that in red or we'll change the text color to red. So that way, whoever's looking at this can quickly see, all right, here's what they ran. Here's the thing that they identified as vulnerable. And then we can start moving forward. So let's see, what's the next thing that we did? Uh, we see Moin Moin running. And if we go back to our notes, I think we also have a screenshot of the default page. Now we can also include that here as well. So I think that would show an initial end map scan revealed Moin Moin running on port 8080. And then we can say like uh, the Moin Moin, oh, let's change that font back to black. Here we go, we can say um, the Moin Moin landing page is shown below. So it'll fix all my typos. I'm sorry, I am awful at typing. So I apologize for that in advance. And we can just paste that right in here. So that looks all right. And I'm just going to highlight, I'm going to actually, instead of bolding this, and in case you don't know, there is a format painter in Word. So you can highlight some text that you want to format it like. Uh, click on format painter and then highlight whatever you want to change the format to. That was actually the wrong thing. We want to highlight it like this. So we'll click on format painter and then paint that. Perfect. So now it's the same font and everything. So let's see, the Moin Moin landing page is shown below. Let's make sure that. There's no page break in between these things. That looks a little sloppy. And let's see, the next thing that we did was find the exploit on exploit DB. So here we have running the exploit. I think we have our search exploit right here. So we can copy this and we can say we identified an exploit uh, for Moin Moin. version 1.9.5 yeah, using search exploit. Yeah, that sounds good. Perfect. And then we'll just paste that screenshot in here. All right, and I'll fix this. So that looks good. So now we have like where we actually showed the exploit being found with search exploit. And we can say that, let's see, let's take a look at our notes. Here's the actual link to the exploit code. So let's say that we used an exploit um, from this link and modified it as shown below. So now what we want to do is since we used some exploit code and we had to customize it, we need to show the changes that we actually made to that code. So let's just fix some of that font right there. So we'll do the format painter and we'll paint this. And we'll do it again and get this as well. Yeah, so now we need to show the customizations that we made to the code. So I'm actually just going to take this table and copy it. And let's just paste it in here. Now let's go to the actual code that we had. We saved it under exploit. And now this is a lot of code, right? If we paste this all in, it would be a couple pages long and nobody wants to read through that. So what we can do is we'll just take a small section of it because this is the only line that we actually modified. And let's copy that. We'll paste it into our little table here. And let's see, we will change this uh, font 
down to Courier New, put the font back to eight. And what we can do is like put a couple of blank lines here and then do something to the effect of like a dot, 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 or you could do like a line all the way across or something like that. Like the word snip with some arrows. There's a bunch of different ways you could do it, but something that will show people that, you know, this isn't all the code. This is just a snip portion of it. And here's the only modification that we made. So we have that. Here's the exploit and modified as shown below. And now we should be able to show running the exploit. So let's take a look back at our notes. So under this section, we have where we actually ran the exploit. Now you might start to pick up on a pattern here with all of the documentation that we're doing for the sample report. We're writing like a little blurb of text and then putting some sort of screenshot or code below it, right? So that's the way we formatted our notes from the beginning. So we kind of set ourselves up for success and for this to be easy. So you have like the little blurb right here of what we would write and then everything below it. And scrolling down, you can see we have like the little blurb of what we would write and then what we would show below it. So the way that we took our notes will make the report writing process so much easier. So what we can do is we'll just take um, this, all this text here of actually running the exploit. See if I can copy all of this. It's being very slow. There we go. And let's see, we'll go back to here. Well, actually, I guess we weren't ready for that. Um, what we're going to have to do is get another one of these little tables here. So I'm just going to copy this and I'll go up here. And the next thing we need to do is just kind of write like uh, ran the modified exploit. So I'll say ran the modified exploit against the Moin Moin service. All right, perfect. Uh, we'll fix that. And let's do the format painter again. So the, the beauty of using the format painter is that you're positive that everything is staying consistent. You really want to have consistency in your report. So it doesn't really matter you know what format you choose to write it in as long as it looks nice but whatever format you choose to use make sure you're consistent all the way through so let's go through and copy all this again and we'll paste it in here and now that we pasted that in there let's make sure that we change all of the font so we'll highlight some of this we'll grab that format painter again and we'll make sure all of this is the same it looks like it already was but perfect that's what we want anyways so we'll go through and do some color highlighting in here as well. So we'll change this to the blue that we were using. And let's see, we entered this two here. So let's change that to blue. Uh, we entered the IP. So we'll change that as well as the port. Perfect. And then I think that was it. That's Those are the only things that we actually entered into this script. So perfect. Yeah, that shows it running. Now let's go take a look back at our notes and see what we did next. It uh, looks like to actually trigger the exploit, we browse to this URL and uh, we were able to receive the first shell. So let's copy this and we'll put this in our report. And now let's say uh, we browse to here uh, to trigger the exploit. So, all right, there's that. Again, grab that format painter. Formatting is very important with reporting, if you couldn't tell. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes people make is not having consistent uh, formatting throughout the report. All right, so now that we have that, let's grab that screenshot that we had before and copy that over. So we'll see, we'll go ahead and paste that right underneath here. All right, and then I'm actually gonna put this down a little bit so that it's all on the same page, it's more consistent. So there's us actually browsing to there to trigger the exploit. And I think the next thing that we did was just receive a reverse shell. Yeah, so uh, the last thing we do is we'll just copy this. Uh, let's see, paste this right over. And we'll say, yep, received our reverse shell. Format painter again. What a lifesaver of a tool. And then we need to grab this little kind of chart down here, this little thing. Copy that and put some blank spaces and we'll paste the entire cell option there. If you don't do that option for pasting, you won't actually get any results. Watch, if I hit control V right here, well, I guess we actually do, bad example. I'll hit enter. And if we just hit control V um, where there's no table, we're not gonna get any actual results. So let me just undo all of that. Now we wanna actually show where we received the reverse shell. So we'll copy all of this text and let's paste it right in here. Again, let's highlight this in blue since that's a command that we ran to receive the reverse shell. Uh, let's see, here's the connect to 
uh, our actual reverse shell. So I'm going to highlight that in red just because that's what we're actually showcasing with this kind of code block here. And then let's highlight this who am I in blue because, again, that's a command that we ran. And there we go. We show that we received our reverse shell on port 443 as Conda. So there's like the whole process you'll go through for documenting in the report of our initial foothold. I'm going to save some time and not document the whole process for going through the privilege escalation. It's basically more of the same. So I don't want to kill you with some tedious reporting. But let's take a look back at what we actually did here. So we started with the initial Nmap scan and now we have our foothold on the machine. To go through with the privilege escalation, we would basically show, uh, let's see, if we go to priv ask, all these things that we have here, here's the cron job that we discovered. So here's another little blurb that we would write and a code block we would put in. Here's another blurb we would write and a code block we would put in, right? So you can just follow this note taking structure that we have and it will set you up for success with writing the report. So once you get through all of that, you're going to have your proof. So uh, I want to make sure we put that in place. So what you would do is just we'll go to our report. Let's make sure we go to the bottom and let's see. Now we're just going to have our proof.txt. We'll just put it down here. That is fine. So we'll say proof.txt. And see, we'll change that to, to black. And then we just need to paste in that screenshot. So let's go ahead and grab that. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see it. Let's copy that. And then we can just go back and paste that proof.txt right in there. And then don't forget, you also need to include the contents of proof.txt. So that's why we didn't just take the screenshot in our notes. We actually grabbed the terminal output too. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And we'll put that in our last little uh, chart here. And then again, let's change that formatting back to Courier New, size 8. Let's see, Courier New and size 8. Awesome. And then we'll highlight this command that we ran. You guessed it, in blue. So there we have that. So this would basically be the contents of the report, the penetration section of the report, if we were to be reporting on this custom box that we made. Now, make sure that you keep your formatting consistent all the way through. Don't leave any steps out. No file transfers. No hosting the HTTP server to transfer. It. Include all of that. Every single step. You should be able to give this report to somebody who has no idea what pen testing is, except, okay, I should run the commands that are highlighted in blue, and they should be able to root the box. Think of it that way. So let's actually take a look back at what we just wrote and how much content we actually just put down. So here is, let's see, one two, three, four, five, five pages that we wrote and we didn't even write the privask. If we added the privask, that's probably another three to four pages. So we're looking at eight, around eight to nine pages just for this one box. And if you have five machines that you're replicating this for, it's easy to see how your report's going to be upwards of, you know, 40 plus pages long. But if you take your notes well, you can see this didn't actually take us that long to write. Now, I would definitely recommend going back through and reading over your report as many times as possible. You don't want to have any mistakes in here, and you certainly don't want to leave anything out. Before you go to write your report, make sure you take a break, get some sleep, because you're going to be exhausted after taking that 24-hour exam. It is grueling. So go back through and read all of this. And there's an awesome tool you can use to help check some of your grammar and things like that. It's called Grammarly. So for example, let's copy and paste this, because as I'm sure... If you've been watching my videos, you know that I suck at typing. I make a lot of mistakes. That's just what happens. I'm human. So what I would do is I would copy and paste some of this. I'll actually just take this whole section here. Let's copy it. Uh, open up my browser, and I'm going to click on this Grammarly extension that I have. Now, what we can do is open up a new document and paste in the contents of what we want checked. Now, this is going to actually check some of our grammar. You can choose all this kind of stuff here for how we want the audience, formality, domain, the tone, all of that. And well, I'm just going to hit done for now, but it will give us some suggestions on things that we could fix in our grammar, some spelling mistakes, all that kind of stuff. And it is free to use. I cannot stress this enough. I would recommend running your report through some sort of software like Grammarly in order to catch any mistakes that you may have in it. If you're interested in using Grammarly, like I said, it is free. Go ahead and check the link below down in the description. So that is about all I have for you for OSCP reporting. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Thank you very much.